Hey fam, this is Minister Eileen Nicole. Thank you for joining us today. We're on chapter 20 of the book of Acts and we're just doing a read through for the for the book of Acts and um, and then later on we're going to go back and do a study. All right, so um, let's get into prayer and then we'll get into the book, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for bringing us all here today. Thank you for helping us read through this book. I ask you to please help us to comprehend and understand what is being said to us and what your, your directive is in the church, uh, for the church. I ask you to please forgive us for the sins that we've committed against you. I ask you to please continue to help us to repent every single day. I ask you to please help us and guide us with all the things that matter to us in our life and the things that matter to you. I ask you to please help us to keep you before us and put no other God, gods before us because that was the whole reason for the book of Acts. Um, that's what the church is about, is putting God first. And I ask you to please help us do that. Um, in Jesus' name, I ask you to also cover our hearts, minds, bodies, our souls, our spirits, and our, our, our within our dreams with the precious and mighty blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. All right, fam, let's get into it. So we have a Bible promise on hope today. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hope. Okay, so um, you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. And that's Psalms 65, 50, uh, 65 and 5. All right, so you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. You are. He is. He is the hope. And we are going to see hope realized in just a few, you know, in, in a short amount of time here. We are going to see hope realized. And your faith is not going to go unpunished. Neither are your good deeds. And neither is adhering to the word of God. So let's get into the book of Acts chapter 20 and chapter 19. We saw that um, the Ephesus church was established. He went to Ephesus and converted everybody, Paul and, and um, Silas. Um, and um, it was a great thing. It was a great thing. And so we're going to go ahead and get into the book of Acts 20. Um, on to Macedonia and to Greece. So after everything happens in Ephesus, he church, you know, turns the church over to God uh, or creates the church there and then turns it over to God. He's off to Macedonia and to Greece. Remember, he said that he wanted to go see Rome. Uh, and then he had sent off the other brethren and then, um, but stayed. All right, so. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when, he had, and when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece and there abode three months. And when the Jews lay wait for him as he was about to sail to Syria, he proposed to return to through Macedonia and there accompanying him into uh, Asia, Sopater of uh, Berea and the Thessalonians Aristarchus and Secundus and Gaius and Derby and Timotheus and, the, and, and of Asia, Tychius, Tychius, and Trophimus. Sorry about that, you guys. Sorry, Trophimus. These going before tarried before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread and came unto them to Troas in five days where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. And there were mainly lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. 
And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with, the, with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell, upon, and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comfort, comforted. And we went before before to ship and sailed to Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came into Mytilene, and we sailed thence and came the next day over to against Chios, and the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried with Trajulum, and the next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the, the uh, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost, and from Mil Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church and. When they were come to him, he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mine, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying of in weight of Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching to the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of the all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseer overseers <clears throat> to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this <clears throat> that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these have, these hands have ministered unto my, necess my necessities and to them that were with me, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had, and, and when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all the words which he spake that they should see his face no more and they accompanied him up to unto the ship all right so that was the book of acts chapter 20 i kind of felt sad because this is the end of paul's ministry in this particular area he's bidding them farewell and they all are 
they understandably are sad but also he warns them that there are going to be a bunch of wolves like we have in the church now that are going to come in and they're going to do just what Paul said. They're going to either try to just sway you into themselves or they're just going to come in and have no, they don't care about anything. They're just going to swindle you. There are some, there are some bishops now in the, in the, in the church that comes in and swindles people allegedly. Uh, so we'll find out about that, but um, we have the, the, that. That's an example. There's a bishop, Lamar, Lamar Whitehead, who is being accused of swindling the church. These are the type of people that Paul is talking about. People are not going to care if you are hurt by what they're doing. Now, we have yet to see what actually transpired, but what he's being accused of is what Paul is talking about. So, I just want to say to you that we all have to work, wash out for this. This is Paul's warning to the church. This is the Holy Spirit's warning to the church that we that we are testing the spirits by the spirit to see if it was it is of God. Fam, if the person doesn't have the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that is not of God. You have to look and see if all of the spirits, if all of it aligns. It's not just one fruit. There, it's a it's a package. It's a fruit package right so um we can't be this dumb all of us together we can't be this dumb to where we're all being taken by swindlers all they got to do is just say they're christian or they're preacher or um they are ahead of the church and now they can just take you for all that you have we can't be all this dumb somebody has to say hey that's not right because the first thing a lot of people like to do is say hey well, he's a man of God. We can't uh, say anything. No, you should be going to God about this man of God. You should be able to go to God yourself. And that's what happens with the idolatry. This is where idolatry gets you. Swindled. All right, fam. Well, that is the book of Acts chapter 20. We're going to be on the book of Acts 21. Uh, and I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.